data have unlimited scope to aid education, connectivity, co-creation, collaboration, and even give coherence a chance. Big changes for the next generation. They are stewards, you are stewards, of the next phase of human evolution and the developing world order, innovating for positive change while living with uncertainty, uncertainty and ambiguity, cultivating a continued spirit of enterprise. So this is the future that I see in terms of creating our economic and social changes in the next five to 10 years. So how do we create a movement? I can just go from my experiences and I'll share with you what I did in, 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 in with Startup Canada. I do wanna start with this for the policymakers in the room. And this comes from Brad Feld, Startup Communities, an entrepreneur based out of Boulder, one of the co-founders of Techstars. He says that movements and startup communities need to be entrepreneur-led. That doesn't mean that everyone else doesn't have a role to play, but that entrepreneurs should be at the helm giving the movement direction. So they don't need to be kind of running the day-to-day, -day, but they definitely need to be giving a direction. He says that there needs to be continual activities that reinforce the community. So these are things like startup drinks, startup weekends, demo camps. You need consistent activity and infrastructure to sustain any movement. You need a shared and long-term vision for the future. And this is in five to 10 years. This is quarter of a century. This is 25 years. So when I started Startup Canada, when we continue to innovate with NACU in the UK, it's all with a 25-year lens of what do we ultimately want to see happen for our nation. And it has to be inclusive. In the tech community, I think we can get snobby sometimes. And we can say, oh, well, that's social. That's retail. That's bricks and mortar. That's a mompreneur. You know? It's all about inclusivity if we want to make complete transformation of our economies and our society. Everyone has a role to play, from the coffee shop owner to the dance teacher. So 10 steps to building a startup movement. Start with yourself from where you stand. So where you stand right now, start exactly there. So when I thought about Startup Canada, it actually turned out that my friends in the UK decided to create Startup Britain. And the entrepreneur in me said, oh, I can create something better than that, than that, you know? And Canada, let's put Canada on the map if the, if the UK wants to be so bold. Start from yourself where you are. I had to leave the government to do it because I knew the movement couldn't come from inside government. So I started in one, my bachelor condo, and this was our first workstation. And this is where our movement started with Startup Canada. Find early adopters, treat them as equals, show them how to lead, and celebrate them with them. So I was a poli-sci student, and I went to the UK. I might have had some success in the UK, but nobody cared when I came back to Canada. I didn't have a network there. No one knew where I came from. I needed the first adopters to give le legitimacy to the movement, and we needed to put them in front um, for this to actually take traction. We needed the top entrepreneurs, the top investors, the top mentors, the top industry, the top government leaders to be the first adopters. And we treated them as if they were co-founders and they were leading this movement, and they were. And so we celebrated them early, early on. So here are some of our first kind of adopters from Quebec International to the National Post to the Black Business Initiative in Halifax, Nova Scotia to the, the small towns in Sydney. You work with whoever wants to work with you and who has that vision of wanting to create an entrepreneurship culture. You don't need everybody, you just need a few. Um, you need to celebrate the crap out of them. So do something together that bonds you together. So at the beginning of the session, we raised our hands and we went on a little roller coaster ride together, but you need to do something that bonds you together. And so when we started Startup Canada, we went on a national tour. We said to the entire startup community in Canada, guys, we want to go on tour. We have no money. We're a bunch of entrepreneurs working out of our condo, but we want to have a conversation about entrepreneurship. Host us. Run events with us. Let us talk to your entrepreneurs. Let, it, let us ask them what they want. We gave them a brand and a platform, and the community stepped up. And over the course of six months when we launched, we ran four, 400 um, 400 town halls in 40 communities, engaging 20,000 entrepreneurs, 500 video interviews, all within six months, resulting in the largest consultation of Canadian entrepreneurs in history, as well as helping us to crowdsource our mandate and our mission. It was taxing, it was a lot of work, but it's exactly what was needed in order to start to build community. 
so that they were talking about entrepreneurship from Smithers, BC, to the Aboriginal community in North Vancouver, all the way over to St. John's, Newfoundland, Halifax, and Bathurst. Everyone was part of the conversation. You can even see in Penticton, um, just because we're in Chile, and Chile has amazing, amazing wine, um, we also have amazing, amazing wine in, uh, in the Okanagan Valley. And so we met with vineyard owners and talked to them. Everybody has a role to play in advancing entrepreneurship, not just technology sector. How can we connect these vineyards to the biotech in Prince Edward Island? These are the connections I'm making in my head. So engage, empower, and listen to them. The tour wasn't about just connecting and creating a unified experience. It was about actually listening to them and hearing what they had to say. So based on that listening, step five is we developed a unified vision and strategy for the next 25 years. And we'll continue to iterate on that. So what we did is we launched a, a, a report called the Startup Blueprints. Startupblueprints.ca is where you can find it. And it was the culmination of all the findings from our tour that set forth the direction. The cool thing about the blueprints is when we launched them, we launched them in pop-up press conferences across Canada. And we weren't actually present. The pop-up press conferences were launched by the people who organized us in their cities and towns, meaning they had ownership over the findings and they were committed to delivering the results in partnership with us. Step six, ensure a high level of commitment of activity and reaffirming programming. So these are things like startup drinks, startup weekends, startup grind events, demo camps, ensuring that there's always something going on to keep the buzz up. We have a large country, we have a limited budget, up until last month, my movement was primarily volunteer run. So we used Twitter, we used Facebook, we used every online mechanism, channel that we could. And now we're one of the most followed entrepreneurship organizations in North America on social media as a result, making big noise for, for Canada. So other ways that you can kind of ensure that consistency is being the one who measures. So if you're a policymaker, if you're a community leader, you be the one to rank things. Top entrepreneurs, top government leaders, top policies, who's making change, celebrating success. So we, we measure, measure, measure who are the top investors, top entrepreneurs, and we report those successes to the media. It creates a narrative around it. Connecting government with startups. Every year we run a big event called Startup Canada Day on the Hill. We connect a thousand entrepreneurs with politicians and we put them in a room and say, talk to one another not with Startup Canada as representing entrepreneurs, but literally as the facilitator of those connections. So that's really important. That annual event keeps government remembering and thinking about our entrepreneurs. And then we also have the Startup Canada Awards. These are the hallmark awards for the entrepreneurship ecosystem. They're not just for entrepreneurs, they're for Accelerator of the Year, Mentor of the Year, um, Entrepreneur Philanthropist of the Year. They're for the ecosystem players along that ecosystem continuum I was showing you earlier. We're celebrating their success because you celebrate what you want to see more of, and so we do that in Canada every year. Seven step. You need to build the infrastructure and activities and programs that engage every part of the ecosystem. So we've decided to focus on two. The first part of our infrastructure from coast to coast is startup communities. It's working really, sorry, it's working really well in the US with Brad Feld, and we decided to work with Brad Feld, Bjorn Herman, Jonathan Ortmans from the Kaufman Foundation, and other advisors from across the world to develop a pan-Canadian startup community network led by entrepreneurs. So we're using startup communities as our infrastructure. The beauty of that is we're empowering local entrepreneurs across the country to lead the movement. So we're providing them with a brand and a platform to lead the movement on our behalf. And so what that creates is a culture of reciprocity, a culture of paying it forward, a culture of openness, a culture of inclusivity. And because every entrepreneur doesn't have enough time to be adding more and more to their schedule, they add more people to the community. So you keep building community and then you create a culture and network of support through community building. Step eight is to connect the grassroots with the top in sync government and entrepreneurs. So like I mentioned, we have the Startup Canada Day on the Hill in Canada. We also have a task force that connects entrepreneurs with government on key policy issues, whether it's the startup visa to get more global entrepreneurs to Canada, or it's financial literacy encouraging more sustainable and resilient startups to start and grow ventures. So we work with government through a number of vehicles and mechanisms and platforms that connect them openly. 
One key point, though, is we're not government funded, so we're able to make those connections happen in a way that is not partisan. Step nine is that you need to learn, iterate, adapt, pivot, innovate, grow, and transcend. So even if you're leading a movement, it's just like you're a startup founder. So you need to keep learning from your experiences, listening to the entrepreneurs, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat the steps. It's the journey. So you don't know when you have a movement until it takes on a life of its own. And when that happens, you need to let it go and pay it forward. Let other entrepreneurs lead. Let them take the helm. You've built a great platform. Let them grow because chances are they know better than you do what, what entrepreneurs need. And pay it forward by helping them. So if you want to go beyond the status quo, that's the 10 steps to developing a status quo movement, I challenge you to take on these last ideas. Contribute, don't duplicate. I think as entrepreneurs, when we're leading movements, we like to dominate, dominate, dominate. And the challenge is that doesn't do anything for culture, and that doesn't do anything for community. And so what you need to do is contribute, don't duplicate. If someone's already running a movement, get behind it. If someone's already doing something very cool, say right on and get behind what they're doing. So seek out who's already doing things, get behind it. If nothing's being done, then go for it. Collaborate, no politicking and ter territoriality. The thing about startup communities and startup ecosystems and startup policies, everyone wants to own something. And resources and where government funds go dictate how organizations interact with one another. What was beautiful about Startup Canada is because we were a grassroots movement, when I look at my other startup nations, they're saying, oh, well, I can't do that, I'm bound by that. For us, we're just a bunch of entrepreneurs running around. We have 80,000 entrepreneurs, 20 startup communities. We're only two years old. Um, and we've only gotten here because we refuse to politic and we, we refuse to play by the status quo rules of territoriality and who funds who. Engage and empower women. Startup conferences across the world, no matter where I go, even in Canada, women are highly underrepresented. You need to make your events, target women, bring up women in, make them feel empowered and engaged. Put them on the podium, put them on the stage, hear their views and find out why they're not participating in your startup community because if they're not present, you're missing a whole part of the economy and a whole part of your community that can help to glue it together. Women, we're really great communicators. We make things happen, we hustle. We can be an important part of your community, but only if you engage us. Move beyond just technology. Like I said, you keep talking technology, 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 just two more slides. So technology, 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 in terms of moving beyond, um, moving beyond the traditional status quo movement. We need to look at social enterprise, look at real world problems, and how technology can support those solutions. You need to connect your movement regionally, nationally, and globally because we all need larger markets. None of our markets are big enough for our entrepreneurs. So we need to be working together. And you don't have to start from scratch, from scratch. You can work with Startup Chile, Startup Canada, other startup nations. You can work with other startup communities and leverage what we're doing. Leverage platforms like Evenoodle, um, who are represented here today to help to start to build your movement. So the results will be an entrepreneur country and economy um, that will really help to fuel the global movement. So to close, Build an entrepreneurship movement by starting from where you are, wherever you are. Thank you. Pardon? Um, would you like to accept questions? If there's time. Yeah, there is time. Five minutes? Sure. Any questions? Don? Could you expand on what you mean by meta network? You used the term, I was quite excited by it, but uh, people in the audience might want more clarification on how the world has moved from a physical limitation to almost a virtual uh, network. Mm -hmm. And you can probably add to this too. But what we're seeing is entrepreneurs aren't just seeing themselves in isolated silos and connectors I can connect with. Um, Miriam, um, but we're actually seeing ourselves as meta connectors paying it forward and we're using LinkedIn, we're using Twitter, we're using online channels to do this. So 
looking for connections everywhere we can and helping others. So what I'm going to be doing is meeting with all of you over the next two days. And I'm going to be thinking about my global network and how my global network can help you and paying it forward. We're going to all connect on LinkedIn. We're going to form a community out of this conference. And that's going to propel connections that aren't in this room to happen. So it's about paying it forward. And when you become a meta connector, new connections come to you really quickly because you're paying it forward and helping others even though there's no direct benefit to you. And I think this is a new psychology that's happening. And I think technology helps to make it possible. But we should always be looking at how we can help each other because then we'll all grow faster. So I'm hoping, Don, that kind of answered the way I consider meta connection. Any other questions? The back. Hi, I'm Lisa from Startup Buenos Aires. Uh, I was wondering, what are the initial challenges that you faced when starting um, Startup Canada and how you overcame them? So Startup Canada, we faced a big challenge that a lot of the startup nations haven't faced because they're government organizations and initiatives. So we started as volunteers, so that's the biggest thing, is being able to leave my job to have the savings necessary, just like every startup here was the exact same experience of starting a, starting a company um, and making sure that we had the runway that we needed in order to build it. There's more failures than there are successes. There's more no's and skepticism than you can count. But you just keep going because you know what your long-term vision is and just kind of be confident. I have to say that the network matters. So one of my first contacts was with the Kauffman Foundation in the States. And they lent their full support to what we were doing in terms of the idea. And they lent mentorship and advisory support, not money. But at the end of the day, money will come if it's a good idea and you're developing traction and worth and value in your community. So for me, it was just really making sure that I didn't let the failures get me down. It was really, really rough. There was a lot of skepticism in a very bureaucratic kind of social country. And so we just persist. And we're still not there yet. You, you'll see I didn't reach step 10 yet when it comes to Startup Canada. I haven't let go, and I haven't paid it forward. When we get to that point, I know we will have succeeded. And I think we got there with our movement in the UK, which is why I was comfortable to let it go. And now it's a very vibrant organization. But um, there's a lot of challenges ahead, but we can support each other as part of the Startup Nations Network to make it happen. One last question at the back. To what extent do you actually engage with the other startup initiatives in the other countries? Like I know Startup Peru is getting up and running. Do you, I mean, do you engage with them often? Is there a global network that you actually have sure. knowledge sharing regularly? Yeah, exactly. So there's a Startup Nations Network that's co-chaired right now between Startup South Korea, Startup Malaysia, Startup Canada, and the Kauffman Foundation. And if you go to startupnations.org, all of the Startup Nations are there. If your nation isn't represented, please do. And we meet annually. So our next meeting is taking place in November in South, South Korea. Um, and we meet in a different country every year simply to share best practices and share experiences. Some are government initiatives, some of us are grassroots initiatives, but there's so much we can learn from one another as we work you know, with our grassroots community to influence policy. So if you're not part of the network, then definitely be become part of it and join the conversation. There's a lot happening globally and the convergence will help us to move faster together. So thank you all so much for your time. I hope you have a great two days. Please come up and approach me, approach each other. Um, and I look forward to growing the Latin America startup community with you over the next two days. Thank you. Before we continue, I just wanted to remind you we have a, a wonderful simultaneous translation oh, service, and I know some of you are not.